Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about getting a handle on debt. Do you cringe every month when all of your bills come due? Are you worried about how you'd cover an emergency? Have you found yourself feeling like you're going to spend the rest of your life paying off interest and never feeling like you'll break even or get ahead? Learn how to begin to release the financial clutter of debt as we continue our month focused on three actionable steps to declutter your life. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. The last episode was about stress. Today, episode was inspired because I see many people in debt and just plain overwhelmed. You know, many people who were doing okay, COVID happened and many have gone into debt. Their stress has increased. I think with COVID, the more I read and learn, it appears like the wealthy got wealthier and people who are maybe middle class and below really suffered the most. Once when I was living in Los Angeles, I had a trauma and I charged a thousand bucks in credit card. And you might think, eh, that's not that much, but this is probably what, 15 or so years ago? No, I've been more than that, maybe probably 20, 25 years ago. And so I don't know what that would be equivalent today. I took a year to pay that off. And for someone who always pays in their credit card, and I don't know about you, but I don't like paying the credit card interest because I'm like, what's that going to? That's making some line in someone's pocket. And because so many people rely on credit cards anyway. So that caused me an amount of stress. It was like this cloud thing that always hung over me. And I'd never done that before. And so I had to spend a year. And anyway, it was just really stressful. So I can't imagine what it would be like to have to continually have credit card debt, because I believe even if we're quote unquote, ignoring it, it's in the back of our mind, kind of this drip, drip, drip. You know, part of our challenge in finding a house is that they won't appraise in wheeling. Now, when we put this house on the market, they're going to be having the 540 freeway complete a whole circle around, and that's going to increase the home value. So I don't feel bad about what this house sells for if it goes over the appraised price, because it's just, it will meet that appraisal. Now, where we're moving to in wheeling, that's probably not going to happen now we could die in that next house or but maybe we need to downsize even further you know there's so many unknown variables with what life holds we really want to be smart we almost paid off this house and we refuse to go into massive debt we don't want to take on a huge mortgage at our age even with a really great interest rate so we are now two er bills right because one trip to the er wasn't enough so i went two two trips in three months I mean, talk about something that'll think you'll bring on a heart attack, but the reality is we will probably be able to cover it because of savings. And I'm also going to make that call and say, what can you do with me? Because the reality is it's a business. And I have to tell you, I, I want to ask, did you recommend all these things for someone who was uninsured? Did you recommend everything was on Medicaid? Because I don't know what the answer to our healthcare system is, but it's shacked up. So anyway, but I know I'm going to be able to work that out. I'm not going to go into debt over that. That's something that I'm grateful for because I think, as my brother said to me, don't skimp on health care. And I feel for, I can't tell you how many I see of these GoFundMes that I see for people to raise funds to pay for cancer treatments, to do everything else. It just, it's heartbreaking. And so I think when you're in debt, that, we all have every other stress that just that piles on. Now, while debt is something you can easily tackle, it's most likely going to take time. So this is designed, again, to get you moving, to get you started, and take away some of the overwhelm. I've had clients so paralyzed that they haven't been able to open their bills. So just know you're not alone. You can do this. You can accomplish it. I accomplished this. I belong to a financial freedom, a couple groups on Facebook. And I have to tell you, I am blown away by some of these people. Now, student 
debt and college costs something else that needs to be reformed. I saw a really interesting thing the other day in a discussion in my alumni group and someone said, yeah, but you know what, if they, if the cost, one of the reasons the costs are so high is people equate that with being good or elite, which, you know, that's a whole other story. Anyway, so they have all these inspiring stories about how they have managed to pay off their student loans and get out of debt in a crazy amount, like two and three years. And I'm talking like 75 and 80,000 and sometimes more. So just know you can do it. But here are some tips to get you started. Quick actionable tip number one, create a budget. Many people don't have a budget. They have no clue how much they are spending and bringing in each month. Kind of like I mentioned at the beginning, not knowing what your bills are because you refuse to open them and just bury your head in the stand. And if you don't have a budget, you might be surprised at how much something is costing you. Like if you spend five, 10, 20 bucks, you might not think of it, but if you're doing it frequently, it adds up. Of course, my favorite target Starbucks. Fancy pants copy, maybe five bucks. I think it's, you can definitely spend six, seven, eight on that. Times that by 52 weeks. You spend 30, 40, 50 bucks on dinner once a week. I multiply that by 52 weeks. You get the idea. So when you look at that number, I'm not really good at math. Let's do 10 times 52 weeks. So that's, that's 520 bucks. For some people that might be a mortgage payment, half of a mortgage payment. That makes a difference. So what you're going to want to do is get your statements, like your credit card bills, your if you have an automobile payment, your mortgage, grab your paycheck stubs, get your grocery receipts. Now that's always going to vary, but you can get a good idea. So you have your income, what you're taking in each month, and start a list of expenses. Now, fixed expenses are going to be really easy, like mortgage and car payment, but then you're going to have variable expenses like groceries. Maybe if you need to get the oil change, you know, the different things that are going to not be the same every time you pay them. So you're going to want to total those up, but that's why I said, get the, all your grocery receipts. So you can get an idea. Okay. You know what? I spend 400, 500, 600 a month and then budget around 500. So then you look at everything, you see my income and what I'm spending each month. And you know, if you have credit card debt, you're gonna to wanna to include that. So cable, beauty and clothing are good places to start to cut your budget to save money. I mentioned the Starbucks, like if you're spending $10 randomly a week, that's 520 that you've just found in your budget. You can use a good old fashioned Excel spreadsheet. There are apps such as Pocket Guard, Mint, Y-N-A-B, good budget. I'm going to encourage you to do a little bit of research because they all have different features. So depending on what is most important to you, you can figure that out. And pen and paper work just as handy as well. I can't do that because my math is terrible. I need an Excel spreadsheet. What one step can you take right now to create a budget? Have you found yourself longing to make a dream a reality? Would you like to achieve financial freedom? Are you swimming in debt? Do you want to be prepared for retirement? Ready to find abundance and share your gifts with the world? Get control of your clutter so your financial clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Got Clutter, 365 journal prompt, financial, supports you in clearing your money clutter. Free gift with purchase, available at reawakenyourbrilliance.com, Amazon, Google Books, and more. Quick actionable tip number two, sell your clutter. This is a bonus tip. Do you see how I related that to the first episode this month? Because if you've already been clearing physical space, I'm hoping that you already have a pile to begin with. Most of you are going to have stuff lying around. You know, we have now done 
two rounds of downsizing in about the same amount of time. And we don't buy stuff every day and we're not bringing in a lot of stuff. And I clear my clutter regularly. And I'm like, dang, we own a lot. So if I'm in that position, I know you are as well. So sell what you're not using. I have to tell you, we are garage sale. Boy, do we had fun. I like seeing that cash and that cash lasted us a while. If you did the three tips from the first episode, you're probably gonna have stuff lying around that you've already taken a huge leap because you've got a pile of stuff. And I'm hoping that that's the case and you're already like, ha ha, I know exactly where everything is that I'd like to share. You could do a garage sale and don't forget to post online. I learned at our garage sale two years ago that people map out, was this one woman I was super impressed with, she figures out at the beginning of the year everything she's gonna need and then she hits garage sales and she, she said pays penny on the dollars. I would, I will negotiate. I'm not a like, my husband's like, ah, just that's fine. I'm more the one that's like, I'm not, not going to give it away for free. And in a couple cases, I donated it instead because people wanted to pay so little. And I thought you can pay more and give it to a charity. So if you have different personalities, or if you're like me, make sure maybe there's a balance there to help you out. If you don't want to do a garage sale, and you might just have a couple items, Craigslist, consignment shops, if you have clothes, for instance, or maybe a pawn shop, the pawn shop's probably not going to pay you much. So maybe you want to try to, to do another option. So you can take that money and put it towards debt. I know that I did a podcast episode, I believe in the fall on how to sell your stuff with tips on maximizing your sale. So clear your space and get some cash. Consider looking at your credit card debt and then look at your pile of what you have to sell. Do you remember how much you paid for all your stuff? How much money do you think you have sitting in those piles? That can help motivate you in the future. And you can remember that when you go to buy something. Maybe that make you say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to buy this. What one step can you do right now to sell your stuff? Quick actionable tip number three, step away. This is similar to my favorite phrase, your clutter kryptonite. I've talked about how you have stuff that it's hard to walk away from. I've joked for me, it's makeup samples. I don't do that anymore. It's leopard print where I can just be like, oh, leopard print shoes. Or I'm very tactile if I'm in the store. I like to feel things and that usually like, ah, oh, enough to satisfy me. What I mean by the stepping away is related to the clutter kryptonite. It's about realizing what is your temptation? If you have a lot of debt, you're obviously buying something. Now, again, sometimes emergencies come up like ER bills. I get this. So this might not apply, but I'm going to encourage you if maybe it's not related to the bills, maybe it's when you're budgeting things that you notice, wow, like I spend $5,000 a year on clothes. With a credit card, it's much easier to indulge in those temptations, right? Because it's plastic, we lay it down, and we don't think about it usually until the bill comes. So if you know where you're weak or challenged or tempted, you can make sure to stop it before it starts. Remind yourself, if you're trying to go out of debt, avoid it. So if you are a clothes hound, stop going to clothes store. Make your household down to one Amazon account. So if you have a spouse or a boyfriend or even a good friend, they can say, hey, stop. What is it that you're spending this on? Replace with a healthy habit. A lot of time for doing something like shopping or whatever we're spending the most on. And again, not always, but usually we're trying to fulfill a need. So can you figure out what need Am I trying to fulfill when I just lay down the credit card and I rack up all this debt? And then think about what healthy habit can I do instead of shopping for clothes or shopping for my hobby? Can I talk to a friend or text my friend? Hey, I'm thinking about buying this and have them talk me off the ledge or go for a walk, deep breathing, make a smoothie, take a bath, whatever is going to work with you, work for you, figure that out. 
Also, consider recognize what being in debt has cost. Has the stress been worth the closet full of clothes that may still have tags on them that may not fit and that you've never worn? If you're up for it, consider why you buy more than you can afford. Oftentimes, the reason why, again, it can be loneliness, sadness, fear. There's no judgment, just awareness. What can you do right now to let go and step away? Take actions from today's podcast. Create a budget. Sell your clutter. Step away and be aware of your clutter kryptonite. Begin tackling your debt. Move forward and release your debt. On our next episode, we're talking about three actionable steps for healing relationships. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.